there's now a way to route the AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon Wireless, and Sprint versions of the Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge to route either of these devices you will need to be on the PE1 firmware to check that we need to launch the settings tap on about phone and then look at the baseband version you see the last three digits here are PE1 I'm going to be talking about downloading a lot of files to do this and you will be able to find the link to all of these files in the full tutorial and that will be linked in the description below you'll first need to download and install Samsung's USB drivers once those are installed you can go ahead and reboot the PC then you'll need to download and install the minimal ADB and fast boot tools then you'll want to download and extract the modified version of Odin then you need to download the rooted boot image to the PC this rooted boot image will have two different ones one for the Galaxy S7 and then one for the Galaxy S7 Edge then you'll need to download and extract the Super SU root binaries once you have downloaded and extracted those SuperSU binary files, you're going to want to move or copy those into the minimal ADB and fastboot directory. For me, this is C program files x86 minimal ADB and fastboot. After you have placed the SuperSU binary files in to the proper directory we'll want to launch the settings application and then you want to scroll down and tap on the lock screen and security option then you want to tap on the secure startup option as you can see from here this is telling me that it is not enabled if it is enabled you will need to disable it and turn it off while we are here we also want to enable developer mode we do that by going into the about phone section and tapping on the build number seven to ten times once developer mode is enabled we go into the developer options menu and then make sure USB debugging is turned on once that's done we're going to want to connect the Galaxy S7 to the PC with a micro USB cable after we have connected the Galaxy S7 to the PC with a micro USB cable we want to double click the minimal ADB and fastboot shortcut that was created when you installed the program then we're going to type in the command ADB space wait dash four dash device and then press enter on the keyboard that's going to start the ADB service and then we're going to be prompted about allowing USB debugging access on the Galaxy S7 we want to tap the always allow from this computer option and then tap on OK if done correctly the command prompt will go back to the prompt 
once we have started the ADB service, we're going to need to boot the Galaxy S7 into download mode. To do that, we need to power off the device. Once the device is powered off, we're going to press and hold the home volume down and power buttons at the same time. We're going to continue holding these three buttons until we get to this warning screen. And then we're going to press on the volume up button to continue. As you can see here, we are in, are in download mode, which is also known as Odin mode. Once we have the Galaxy S7 into download mode, we're going to launch that modified version of Odin. And then we're going to click on the AP button. Then we're going to browse and select the modified rooted boot image that we downloaded earlier, that tar file. We're going to click it and then click open. We just need to make sure that box is checked, which should be checked whenever you select a file. Then once that is done, we just click the start button. It's going to flash that root image to the Galaxy S7 and then your S7 will reboot. We're going to see the Android is starting screen. then it's going to take us into the Android operating system. Once you are back into the Android operating system, we're going to turn our attention back to the command prompt. We need to type root.bat and then press enter on the keyboard. You're going to see some commands come up like that. And then you're going to see the Galaxy S7 reboot. You can see we have a nice custom icon here now that we've rooted the Galaxy S7. Just like before, it's going to go through the typical boot animation.
Now once we are back into the Android operating system, you can see we have the Super SU app installed. You can go ahead and launch it. You may be prompted about SuperSU being out of date and that you'll want to update. For now, you just want to ignore that. There has been some reports that updating the app through the Play Store is perfectly fine. But do not let the SuperSU update itself after you have opened it up.